it's been an extremely tough match up here between Vidit Gujarati and Dimitrios Mastro Vasilis. They have played two classical games, two rapid games of 25 plus 10 and two rapid games of 10 plus 10 and all of them have ended in draws. This is now the first game of Blitz 5 plus 3 and Vidit opens the game with 1 e4. We have the Sicilian. Knight comes out, pawn up to e6. This is the same opening that Mastro Vasilis did play before and Vidit goes for this setup again. Bishop e2 with a delayed d4. He castles and now Bishop comes out and d4. Last time this was played, Dimitrios played knight f6 here and got into a bad position after e5. So this time he came well prepared playing knight c6. Vidit is also prepared. He brings his queen back. But Dimitrios knows it more. He goes queen c7 with it still in his prep. Rook to d1. Who's going to blink first? Knight to e5. I like how he turned the knight around there. And now the knight is actually very interestingly positioned. It can jump here. It can jump here. Also the bishop opens up. But one problem for black which you must notice carefully is that his pieces are not yet developed. So Vidit can actually try and take advantage of that fact. He's thinking here, one natural idea that comes to mind is to take on e5, queen takes and push your pawn up and gain more space. But this is exactly what Dimitrios wants. His bishop is coming out here, then his queen, knight can come out. So this is the way in which he wants to continue. Vidit does take the knight, queen takes and now Maybe not f4, it's a bit too rash to do that straight away. One thing that you can observe is how quickly Dimitrios is playing. He has 5 minutes, queen b6, that's perhaps the best move. But the Greek grandmaster still in his prep. Bishop comes out to e3 and now knight to f6. Once again, tempting is to push the pawn here with f4. But there's also another way to dislodge the queen, which is to play bishop to d4. So Vidit has to decide which way he wants to continue. Meanwhile, he has a one minute disadvantage on the clock. You have to manage your time well because you have played first 25 plus 10, then you have played 10 plus 10 and now suddenly 5 plus 3 without much time gap in between. So when then that starts to happen, you need to adjust to it very quickly. In many of the lines in such positions, A4 is a move to be considered. That should definitely be taken into consideration. But right now, E4 pawn is under pressure. And if you play a move like F3, then black can already start pressing here with B4. So with it goes Bishop D4. And Dimitrios makes his move instantly once again. It's quite unnerving when you're playing your opponent who is so well prepared. You're on move number 13 and he has blitzed out all his moves. It's such an important game. You have to keep your mental fortitude. Rook takes b8. Now, with it has two options at his disposal. One is to play f3 to solidify his center. The other one is to push his pawn to e5. Which one is better? He pushes his pawn to e5. Now very important for Dimitrios is to come here with the knight because after takes, takes, he's attacking this pawn and even if you save it, it's not easy to play a4 because there's always bishop c2. So this is a critical moment of the game. If he plays knight e4, he should be fine. But if he goes knight d5, which is looking the most natural move, then with it can take, take, and hit the queen side with a4 and with lack of development already the rook entering the game the bishop looking here it can get very nasty and you can see that the greek grandmaster now taking his time and rightly so he must figure out all the intricacies before making the move this could be the critical moment of the entire game he has four minutes 15 seconds with it has two minutes 53 seconds Look at the focus of both the players. It's as if they have zoned out from the entire world and focusing on just this game. Oof, he blunders. 
Will Vidit be able to find this? Knight takes d5, bishop takes and now a4. Yes, he finds it instantly. What a move, a4. You can't even play b4 because bishop takes a6 is hanging. And notice carefully how this bishop controls the pawn. So even if you take here, I can take back and the rook cannot take this pawn. So it's a perfect position for white. He goes bishop e7 and he's hoping that with it does not do something very drastic and that he can castle. If black can castle and get d6 here, he should be fine. But with it's not going to allow that. After ab, ab, all you need to do here is stop your opponent from castling. And how do you do that? Well, of course, you need to get your rook to the 7th heaven. The 7th rank is where the rooks thrive. And here, if you castle, then rook takes pawn is hanging. So can Vidit play that? Of course, he should be able to do that. But he's thinking. And he has 2 minutes, 17 seconds. He's taking a bit of time, unusually. But I can understand that he doesn't want to miss his opportunity here. There could be some tactical blow like, you know, bishop b5 takes and check back. But there is already a bishop looking on that square. So he's trying to observe very carefully what all he can do. Maybe there's a bishop a7 intermezzo. No, he finds it. Rook a7. That's a good move. Rook a7 played. And now Dimitrios needs to use his time wisely to come out of the problems that he has. Let's try to consider what are the options that are there at his disposal. One option is to play rook b7 to offer a rook trade. That your rook is active and I want to trade it. But after tay, tay. Bishop takes b5. It's already better for white. Okay, so that does not work. What else can be done? Ah, a good idea can be bishop c6. You know, with this move, what you have done is you have supported everything. And next move, you want to castle it out. However, here is a classy move for white. Who doesn't care about his pawn structure, but plays bishop f3. And now you cannot castle because if you do so, I'll simply take, take and win your bishop. That is game over. And if you take on f3 here and think that you're spoiling my structure, your problem still persists that this pawn is weak and you cannot castle. So there are so many problems here with the bishop going back as well. What is the other possibility? Maybe you can go b4. And this is definitely an idea that you want to remove this pawn from the attack of the bishop. But once again, I can go bishop f3. This is a very recurring idea. Because if you can get rid of this central bishop, then this rook can activate and this is a weak pawn there. I think the best that black can do is just castle, give up this pawn and hope to survive after bishop g5 that this endgame is holdable. Not easy, but maybe that is the best. Apart from this, one idea that could be played is h5 to activate your rook from this side, maybe with h4. And but it does not solve any of your problems related to the king and d7 pawn. But look at the time. Dimitrios has taken two minutes on the clock already and has not come up with a solution. Lastly, and maybe worthy of consideration is f6. However, with this move, it's already feeling like your position is getting too weakened and you can even provoke g6 and then fall back. Bishop f3 because now e takes f6 is also a threat. So Vidit has many, many good options here. And now Dimitrios needs to move. He's gone down to 1 minute 30 seconds. He plays h5. And we had spoken about this move. And here Vidit has a very nice move. Which is because black did not improve anything in his position. He can drop back his bishop. Firstly stopping rook at 6. But more importantly opening up the rook. And threatening bishop f3. But bishop e3 is such a tough move. Under such pressure to find it's a backward move. But Vidit finds it. This is great chess by Vidit Gujarati. He's playing almost a flawless game. Taking his time. And now bishop f3 is really a powerful move. Because when you take here, my rook will get activated. What is Dimitrios going to do next? Because he's almost tied up completely. And this last move even unleash this rook on d1 he's also running down on time he has a minute left on the clock i'm sure that vidit knows that he's winning but these are the critical moments when you know that you're winning you start to get a bit nervous you start to get a bit shaky and this is where you have to maintain your calm 
Now 45 seconds for Mastro Vasilis. And he's unable to find a move. That is the worst situation that you can be in. Maybe good or bad. I think you need to strike in the center with F6. No, he goes H4. But now can with it play this move which looks aesthetically not so good. But it opens up this. And it's an important move. Bishop F3 to remove the kind of glue in black's position. This bishop is the most important piece that is there. Yes, he finds it. Bishop F3. Great move by Vidit Gujarati. And he is now on course to victory. He's found some amazing moves here. And Bishop F3 is maybe the final nail in the black's coffin. Of course, when black takes here, he can take back with the pawn. But there's also a very strong intermediate move to take here and to threaten this bishop. He takes on F3 and will with it take on F3 back or will he go really in an adventurous mode and take the pawn on D7. Both moves are winning. Both moves are great. Let's see what Vidit comes up with. He has a minute on the clock and he takes with the rook. Well done. This was a great move because now the bishop is hanging. Also, this bishop is hanging. You can't protect everything. He goes bishop h5 just so that f7 remains guarded. Takes here king f8. Now, very important to note that white is a pawn up. Also, his rooks are active, so he should be completely winning. But there's also opposite colored bishops in the position. And if black somehow manages to activate his rook, maybe it could be some drawing chances. But firstly, this pawn is too weak. And a way to round it up is rook to b7. With this move, you are attacking here. And with it finds it. He finds this move. Dimitrios creates a one move threat to checkmate on the back rank. Of course, with it's not going to fall for it. But it's these little moves where, you know, you lose a lot of time. He's also having only 20 seconds. H3 is the best move, creating a loft for the king on H2. Now king goes to G8 and uh, B5 pawn is going to fall. Yes, he takes it. Bishop G6. C2 is attacked. And how do you continue? He goes rook C5. The rook is well placed. Now the B pawn is ready to roll. So is the C pawn. Rook H5 played, attacking the E5 pawn. And now king moves up to H2. King H7 played. It's now a matter of sort of technique. He goes B4. The B pawn is ready to advance. Rook comes back. If somehow magically black is able to get another rook on the last rank, there could be a mate. But it's not so easy. Rook comes to B1. Now, just... Rook a3, rook b3, one idea. Also c4, why not? With it finds rook a3, bishop e4. And you can get rid of this active rook. Well done. Rook b3. Now there is a tactic with bishop c2. But that doesn't help as well. Takes, takes. And he plays king g6, b6, rook h8. Rook comes back. Is black solidifying here? Rook coming here, king up. No, with it goes back. Rook here, rook comes to c4, king up f3 and now when the bishop moves this is attacked he goes back and with it checks with it down to last 10 seconds he needs to be careful king takes rook takes f7 there's a threat of bishop f4 winning this rook the rook has to move rook c8 played and now with it can push the pawn to b7 and either it queens or you lose the bishop or bishop f4 and dimitrios resigns this is the first win for with it and the most critical one that helped him win the second round against Dimitrios Mastro Vasilis and move to the third round of the World Cup. He needs another draw in the next game, which most likely he will be able to get. But this was such an important game and it was almost a perfect game played by Vidit. Fantastic play.